All right, we got a uh, live, live, all the cameras going live. Okay, today marks 365 days uh, since the occupation at City Hall began. Uh, we began the occupation at City Hall on October 3rd, 2020, after on October 2nd, 2020, Tyrus Jones, an unarmed black man, was shot by Rockford Police Department officer Dominic McNeese while running away uh, in the streets of Rockford, Illinois. Our occupation of the City Hall continued through uh, the end of November when Officer Dominic McNeese would be found to be justified in his attempted murder of Tyrus Jones and would uh, be sent back to patrol the streets of Rockford, Illinois. Uh, our occupation of the City Hall in Rockford, Illinois will continue through January 5th, 2021 when Denzel Duvant would be mercilessly beat by multiple officers at the Rockford Police Department while he was handcuffed. Uh, one of the officers involved in that assault would be Officer Dominic McNeese, who just months ago had been found justified in his attempted murder of Tyrus Jones. Uh, there would be no investigation into the assault of uh, Denzel Duvant. Uh, our occupation of the City Hall in Rockford, Illinois, will continue through April 10th, 2021, when Faustin Guaytigo would be murdered inside of his home by Winnebago County Sheriff Deputy Joseph Brulard and his cohorts. Uh, our occupation will continue. Uh, when no more than 24 hours later, Jose Gonzalez Jr. will be shot uh, while running away by Rockford Police Department Officer Owen McGinnis. Uh, occupation of the City Hall will continue through April 25, 2021, when Raymond Jackson would die after a high-speed pursuit took place in the streets of Rockford, Illinois, and the person being pursued by the Rockford Police Department uh, by the Rockford Police Department would crash his car into uh, Raymond Jackson's vehicle killing Raymond Jackson and critically injuring the children, the two children that were in the car with Raymond Jackson. Our occupation of the City Hall will continue through August 2021 when the shooting and the murder of uh, Faustin Guaytigo will be found to be justified and Officer Joseph Brulard will return back to the... Damn. I didn't know if that was a car accident or some type of a gunshot. Got real PTSD from loud noises while lives going. Uh, uh, so our occupation of the City Hall will continue through August 2021 uh, when uh, Faustin Guaytigo's murder will be ruled justified and uh, Joseph Brulard will return to the streets of Winnebago County uh, endangering members of this community. Uh, occupation of the City Hall will continue through September 2021 when the shooting of Jose Gonzalez Jr. will be ruled to be justified and Owen McGinnis will return to the streets of Rockford, Illinois, endangering members of this community. And as we sit here on October 3rd, 2021, we anticipate a, a justified verdict or justified finding uh, coming out in the investigation of the high-speed pursuit that led to the death of Raymond Jackson. And so we want to take this time to say justice for Raymond Jackson, justice for Faustin Guaytigo, justice for Jose Gonzalez Jr., uh, justice for Denzel Duvant, and justice for Tyrus Jones, with the realization that there may be some people who have understanding and empathy for uh, Faustin Guaytigo or have understanding and empathy for uh, Denzel Duvant, but do not have that same understanding and empathy for uh, Tyrus Jones or for Raymond Jackson or for Jose Gonzalez Jr., uh, or vice versa. And it becomes our responsibility and our duty at the point in which people have understanding and empathy to extrapolate out how each and every case of police terror mass incarceration and racial injustice is directly and indirectly connected to each and every other case of police terrorism, mass incarceration and racial injustice and how each one of us as members of this community are both directly and indirectly affected by every case of police terrorism, mass incarceration and racial injustice. Uh, it was uh, we were expecting it to be uh, this weekend to have a little bit more inclement weather than we ended up having it than we ended up having. Uh, and so the memorials, the refreshing of the memorials was sort of the uh, main uh, event that we had for Sunday. But once we seen that it was going to be raining Saturday and Sunday, we went ahead and got the memorials refreshed ahead of time because of the difficulties that come with trying to refresh the memorials on Say Their Name Square uh, in the rain. Uh, so as we sit here today, the memorials have already been refreshed. Uh, and uh, yesterday I did a live where I spoke about uh, the importance of the importance of us uh, commemorating and remembering uh, the shooting of Tyrus Jones and all the implications that the shooting of Tyrus Jones and the justified findings of the shooting of Tyrus Jones have on us as a, a community. Uh, and on us as an organization and even took some time to speak about uh, 
what it's meant to me individually. Uh, I think that today I would like to take some time to speak on the importance of the occupation at City Hall and uh, to speak on the importance of continuing the occupation at City Hall uh, and to speak on some things that I've learned individually and I believe that we've also learned collectively from the occupation at City Hall. Uh, and I think that the, the first thing that I would uh, like to take time to speak on is the importance of Say Their Name Square and the importance of the memorials that we have here on Say Their Name Square. Uh, uh, I don't believe that we can uh, have any type of movement that is only centered on one individual's uh, experience with police terrorism, mass incarceration, or racial injustice. Uh, I, I believe that we have to uh, envelop all of the different people who have uh, dealt with these issues and who have been victimized and traumatized with these, by these issues. But I do believe that there is something uh, uh, specific about people who have lost their lives uh, because of these issues. I do believe that uh, we have to to make sure to constantly do the job of reminding people that the ignoring of the microaggressions of black people being pulled over three times as often as white people, the ignoring of, uh, excuse me, the microaggressions of black people being pulled, off, pulled over three times as often as white people, uh, the ignoring of the microaggressions of police officers uh, treating uh, members of this community disrespectfully, the ignoring of the microaggressions of police officers using pretext stops to illegally uh, search people's cars, the ignoring of the uh, of all these different uh, forms of microaggressions is what gets us to a place where these macroaggressions take place. It's what gets us to a place of Tyrus Jones being shot by the Rockford Police Department. I 100% I believe that if there would have been throughout the spring and the summer a stronger onus on uh, dealing with the microaggressions that protesters were dealing with, that we would have maybe have got to a place where the macroaggression that Tyrus Jones dealt with uh, did not manifest in that way. Uh, I think the same thing has to be said for uh, uh, Faust and Guaytigo. Uh, I think that a lot was learned from uh, Faust and Guaytigo being murdered, uh, the justifying of Faust and Guaytigo being murdered, uh, some of the uh, lethargy that was around Faust and Guaytigo being murdered, and then also uh, the, the body camera video was released after Faust and Guaytigo was murdered. Uh, and we learned as a community and as a collective, as, or as an organization, that it's not simply going to be enough for... Uh, what up, what up, what up? Uh, it's not simply going to be enough uh, for us to see the... As we're as we're trying to get the uh, dash camera video from the shooting of Tyrus Jones released, as we uh, as we advocate for transparency with some of these video with video footage being released, as the police department, uh, Rafa Police Department, prepares to have body cameras, it's not simply going to be enough for us to see uh, what has happened to members of our community. Uh, we're going to have to build up the type of political awareness and political consciousness and the type of uh, human empathy that is needed, so that way when we see so, uh, Faust and Guaytigo being murdered, when we see Tyrus Jones being shot, uh, when we see Denzel Duvant being assaulted and being beat, uh, that we uh, put actions to those things, that we have uh, responses to those things, that we don't try to allow uh, ourselves to scapegoat out of being involved because uh, of uh, a narrative that might be being pushed by some of these institutions. Uh, each person that we have on these memorials that say their name square, all 15 of them, when they were killed, there was a narrative that was put out about them. There was some type of uh, criminalization that was done and stigmatization that was done and dehumanization that was done. Uh, and I think that keeping these memorials up and keeping these faces up and uh, uh, having the pamphlets, the Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force pamphlets in which uh, a lot of these people's stories can be read gets us to a place of rehumanizing some of these people who the, the city has dehumanized, of unstigmatizing some of these people that the city has stigmatized. Uh, I've seen that happen with uh, uh, Little Mike Sago. Uh, there's, uh, when we put the post up about Little Mike Sago, there's very few people who take any time out to comment and leave anything negative. There's mostly people in the community who understand that this was a 16 year old who had his life taken away uh, and that justice was never served for and we have to to do the job of of getting all of these victims uh, their their human dignity back and uh, uh, I believe that that's one of the things that say their name square uh, goes a far away in doing uh, I think one of the other things that uh, was important about the occupation at City Hall uh, has been our communication with members of the community uh, whether those uh, come from a positive light at times or come from a negative light at times, 
Uh, we've continued to be here and to communicate about the issues. Uh, when people come down, whether it's people that's come at 2 o'clock in the morning and we've had conversations, it's people that's come at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we've had conversations. And I think that our uh, availability and our presence uh, has been something that has uh, been invaluable as well. Uh, I think that uh, it's, going to, it's going to take more than only dialogue and take more than only conversing and articulating about some of these issues to get us into a place where we're absolving ourselves of these issues. But I do believe that that is uh, an important starting point. And I, be I do believe that if we can't properly articulate these things, if we can't uh, properly have a, a, a discourse and a dialogue about these things, then we'll forever be in the cycle of these things continuing to happen. And so uh, I think that our presence and our communication has also been something that has been of the utmost importance, along with Say Their Name Square. Uh, I, the same thing with the chalk that we have put down since. Uh, and again, a lot of these things have uh, Say Their Name Square. We put these memorials up at the end of December. So they've been here for, they, it hasn't been a full year, but close to a full year. Uh, since the first time we came out here, we've always had somebody out here that's been uh, 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 capable of articulating and having dialogue with people about these issues. So this is something that we've done continuously. Uh, and then uh, the chalk that we've put down uh, in the front of City Hall now and in some of the other areas downtown now, which originated in the back of City Hall, uh, has been important as well. There have been some people who, if it wasn't for the chalk being down on the ground, they wouldn't have uh, known what it was we were here for. If it wasn't for the chalk being down on the ground, they wouldn't have taken the time uh, to ask questions what we were here for, or ask why this was written in the chalk. Uh, <clears throat> and as I've, uh, this, uh, I've said this uh, multiple times before, and I think this is something that I still uh, believe wholly, that uh, right now it is not our job or our responsibility uh, as the May 30th Alliance to try to win people over or to try to do things in a way uh, in which uh, you will not alienate people or you will get more, uh, this, uh, you'll win people to your side. Uh, our responsibility and our job has been to make people know that these issues exist. Uh, it will have to... Uh, uh, it will be for other other organizations and other people, and maybe at some point in time, this will uh, will uh, what we're doing will evolve to maybe trying to win people over. But at this exact moment, we live in a city and we live in an area where we know the majority of people uh, do not know the names that we have down here on these memorials. Uh, but it is not impossible to get the majority of people to know these names. Uh, the majority of people do not know the. Uh, the gravity of these issues that exist in this city and how important it is that we address these things. Uh, but it is possible to get the majority of people to know these things. Uh, and a lot of times uh, you won't get somebody to stop uh, you won't get somebody stopping driving down the street if it's just people here. Uh, there are some people who you won't get to stop and ask questions with just the memorials and people here. Uh, but there has been uh, a plethora of people who, because of the chalk, have stopped and asked questions or who have stopped and had conversations with the people that they're walking in in groups. And so uh, the same way that I believe that the memorials and our presence has done the job of making people more aware of these issues, uh, the chalk that we have put down has done the job of making people more aware of these issues as well. Uh, I think another one of the things that has been of an importance since we've been out here is uh, the live from Occupy City Halls and the building up of, of a, a platform of, uh, of us communicating directly to members of this community. Uh, and by no means do we have everybody that's in the city watching these things or do we have as many people that we need to have watching these things, watching these things. Uh, but we have done the job of cutting out uh, the middleman, of cutting out uh, needing 13 or 23 or 39 or needing uh, Rock for Register Star to speak about something. Uh, the majority of people who got their information, uh, the majority of people uh, who understand some of these issues now and who, uh, who have, who we have done the job of reaching about these issues now, know that they can come directly to the Facebook page or directly to the Twitter page or directly to Instagram uh, and get, uh, if, or directly to YouTube and get more information about some of these things. And here, uh, us have dialogue and discourse about some of these things. Uh, and I think that one of the other things that the live from Occupy City Halls and the communication that we've done on our platforms have have also done is getting people to a place where they know how to articulate some of these things with people as well, where they they feel more comfortable talking about uh, these things with family members and friends as well. Uh, and so I think that that is something else that we have to continue to press forward with and that uh, has been a, a 
that has been a, a, a mark in the, in the win column for, again, getting people to know about these issues, not not uh, worrying about winning people over to your side or not uh, worrying about trying to win a, a personality contest or worrying about uh, uh, being the most charismatic or, or people liking you. But simply uh, understanding that the most thing, the thing that is the most important is the issues and people knowing the issues. Uh, and so I believe that the, the live from Occupy City Halls and the, some of the podcasts and some of the other things that we have done uh, as far as uh, as far as communicating these things has also been uh, uh, important. Uh, and then I think that uh, continuing to uh, do protests and demonstrations outside of the occupation in City Hall uh, has been another thing that has been important. We just finished up a season of City Market uh, where just as just we would go to City Market, we would be at City Hall beforehand, we go to City Market and we would turn back to City Hall. There were plenty of people uh, during the City Market uh, protest that was going on where after City Market was over with, people would stop by here and people would talk or beforehand people would talk or it was uh, people in the area that would ask if we were the people that were at City market and so uh and we continue to be at the food truck tuesday as well uh as in, in the time that we've been down here there have been a couple of marches that we've also done as well we uh, had a march after the murder of faustin guaytigo and the shooting of jose gonzalez jr uh more immediately after uh uh uh, Tyrus Jones was shot. We put we had marches and we put together marches. And so I think that another thing that we have done the job of doing is and we went outside the Winnebago County Courthouse earlier on as well. Another thing that we have done the job of doing is, uh, is continuing to do things outside of the occupation at City Hall. Uh, <clears throat> and so I believe that in, 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 uh, in, in, in conclusion, I want to wrap this up and pass it on to, some, uh, to someone else if someone else has a desire to talk. Uh, but I believe that uh, after a, a Coming to a, a full year and seeing some of these, all these different things that we have done, uh, understanding the pros that have come from those things, the cons that have come from those things. Uh, I'd also be remiss if I didn't point out that in the year that we've been here, we've had one person go to trial, the only person who has went to trial for any of these charges, and uh, they have won. They won their, their trial. They were found not guilty. I believe that that's another uh, uh, a check in the win column, and I, I believe that that is – uh, something else that's important to uh, to point out and to speak about. Uh, and also, uh, uh, we've had somebody going to uh, court cases, sometimes if it's uh, conflicting court cases, multiple members of the May 30th Alliance uh, going to court cases. And so we've also learned uh, more about the uh, uh, criminal justice system and the, uh, the legal system in the time that we've been out here. The same thing with our interactions with police officers uh, has our interactions with police officers has done the job of us uh, knowing more of these police officers and, and taking time to research uh, and find out what some of these other police officers have been involved in, whether they be through uh, uh, newspaper articles or whether they be through case law text or whether it be firsthand information that we're getting from members of the community coming out and talking about their experience with these police officers. Uh, and those things have manifested in the Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force pamphlet uh, and in the Culture of Impunity pamphlet. And I think that, again, uh, that is something else that we have done while we have been out here that is has been uh, that has been uh, a, ch a check in the win column uh, uh, box. And so in conclusion, what I want to say is that all of these different things that we have embarked on as we have been out here, uh, I believe is uh, our responsibility, our duty, our job to uh, continue to evolve those things, to continue to grow those things, uh, to find out, uh, to understand which which parts of those things uh, have worked in assisting us to getting closer to our goal and getting closer to what our benchmark is, which is getting uh, this whole, the entire community to, under, to know about these issues uh, with the belief that once everybody, once we have a majority of the community knowing about these issues, that that will naturally change the consciousness that exists within this community. And so uh, for these, for this next year for marketing by years for this next year i think one of the things that we want to do the job of doing is getting more people uh involved with putting chalk down getting more people involved with understanding why these memorials are up keeping the memorials up uh, keeping the chalk up for the as long as the weather permits uh continuing to create more pamphlets continuing to do more research uh, continuing to uh, be more involved with some of the uh, families of these victims uh continuing to uh, learn more about the uh, uh the criminal justice system and continuing Continuing to learn more about uh, the, the how the police operate and the policies and procedures that exist in this city. And as we do all those things, uh, given the information that we find uh, back to the community, uh, back to the city, 
uh, and then actually putting that information into practice. And I believe that in conjunction, all of those things get us into a place of, of educating ourselves and uh, educating members of the community. Uh, and so I want to thank everybody who has been uh, instrumental in us uh, being here for a year. There is not a single act that was uh, uh, it's not a single act that was too small to be significant and uh, so everybody who's dropped off hand warmers, everybody who's dropped off money, everybody who dropped off uh, coffee, everybody who dropped off food, all of those things uh, have been needed and all of those things have been uh, important uh, and the same thing goes for anybody who's uh, uh, came out and sat down here and had a conversation, anybody who's uh, came out uh, to the city market uh, and, and marched in the crosswalk. Anybody who shared a post online or shared a status online or commented on something online, uh, anybody who's taken the uh, uh, things that they've heard us speaking about and spoke about those things inside of their home with their loved ones, with their family and friends, uh, all of those things uh, we are thankful for and uh, it's not enough words to, uh, uh, for us to put to use to uh, say our gratification. So. Uh, got somebody else that's gonna come up and speak, and I'll I'll take a step back. We outside. We can do it this way too. All right. So uh, I just really want to talk about what a uh, really what a whirlwind. It's been a whirlwind of emotions um, over this last year and then um, really over the last uh, year and a half or so if you've been kind of tapped into um, all the activism, all the protesting, all of the uh, direct action and education and awareness that has been brought on uh, since the death of George Floyd and then even for some other people that were... Um, a part of the uh, community of people that were trying to bring awareness to these issues prior to that happening. It has been an incredibly humbling experience to uh, meet and know these people who have uh, gone through experiences with these police officers, uh, with this justice system, with this city, with this county. Um, and it has also been frustrating. It has been tiring. It has been sad um, to hear stories from people just walking by on the street um, when they find out we're out here protesting and to just learn from them um, experiences that they've had or people who will find us on social media and reach out to us about experiences they've had with RPD um, and to learn what a uh, broad experience this is for a lot of people who um, just differ in small ways uh, but have had a lot of similar experiences with each other is um, it's frustrating because here we are a year later and obviously we're not, we haven't uh, necessarily defunded the police or we haven't abolished the police. Um, and to that, I would just say that this year in itself wasn't necessarily a goal of anyone's. It wasn't uh, a goal to just make it to a year. Um, the goal has, has always been about uh you know bringing awareness one the you know short term the long term goals have always been defunding the police abolishing the police so we have to recognize that while it has been a year and we haven't accomplished the long term goals that we're not here to celebrate just the fact that we've been here a year we're here to acknowledge that over the course of the last year there are that many more people who are, are aware of people like Tyrus Jones or even pushing it back further and uh, saying Mark Anthony Barmore, uh, Philip Johnson, Demetrius Bennett, Logan Bell. Uh, there are that many more people who are aware of situations that have occurred since the start of the occupation. Denzel Duvant, 
uh, Falsen Guaytigo, Jose Gonzalez Jr., all of the protesters who were assaulted by Winnebago County and Rockford Police Department, um, and then other people who have been uh, murdered outside of the city, um, Michael Guzman in South Beloit. Uh, so it's important to acknowledge that uh, we're really taking a look at the last year and seeing um, what all has occurred and not necessarily uh, what have we done, gotten done by this year mark. Um, so we want to, uh, again, acknowledge all the people who have uh, played any role because it's not just about uh, people who have sat out here for a year. It's not about um, the fact that we've had somebody here uh, you know, outside of City Hall every day for the last year. It's about, uh, you know, how, how other ways that people have been involved by bringing awareness to this, by spreading these messages, by having these conversations, um, by, by sharing, by liking, by uh, following and uh, passing around these messages. Um, we want to thank everybody who has been involved in that because really what the uh, goal of this was was to not let these conversations die out, was to make sure that there was always somebody speaking about Tyrus Jones. There was always somebody speaking about uh, Eddie Patterson. There was always somebody speaking about Lil Mike Sago. There was always somebody that was keeping these conversations, these hard conversations, these incredibly humbling conversations uh, going, that there was always somebody uh, remembering them. There was always somebody speaking on their name. There was always somebody who was uh, demanding justice for these people because though it is, it's still the same year that uh, Faustin Guaytigo was murdered, it's, it's been a year since Tyrus Jones was shot. And though it's been a year since Tyrus Jones was shot, it's been, uh, you know, two, two years since... Um, uh, the other people have gone through similar situations. It's been 10 years since uh, Lil Mike. It's been, you know, 20 years. It's been 30 years. It's, it's been uh, longer and longer for other people who still haven't gotten justice. So while we've used this last conversation and got this, uh, got this conversation kick-started by Tyrus Jones, we're really still out here speaking about all of these different situations that... Uh, still need recognition brought to them and need uh, to be talked about so they don't die out. So for everybody who has participated in that, even if you haven't been down here, even if you haven't talked to us face to face, if you reached out, if you've shared, if you've talked about it with your family, if you talked about it with your friends or mentioned it to uh, anybody or spoke about it or um, demanded justice or protested in any way, um, came to any teach-ins, did any readings when we were doing the the uh, uh, teach the the teach-in. Um, thank you because you have contributed. You have contributed, even if you weren't necessarily down here in person. You have contributed to uh, what our goal was uh, over the last year, and then moving forward um, into this I guess, second year. Um, that you've kept this conversation going. So thank you to, to everyone. Thank you to all of, uh, as Leslie said, everyone that's brought down hot chocolate or, or honked as you drove by or, you know, everybody. Everybody in their own small way has uh, contributed. We've seen over the last uh, year a lot of, um, extreme things take place. And if it wasn't for uh, members of this community still supporting us, still backing us um, emotionally, uh, financially, spiritually for some of us, um, I don't know that these conversations would be able to keep going. So uh, thank you to everyone who has contributed and
in their own ways, in the ways that they could, in the ways that they know how, in the ways that they are able to. Uh, there, there's no, there's no small way. Everybody is uh, contributed. Uh, uh, you know, it takes, a, it takes a village, it takes a community to really uh, keep keep these issues um, spoken about and relevant. So, uh, thank you, thank you to everyone. Hello, my name is Ari Perez. I'm a member of the May 30th Alliance. Uh, I think that's a good place to start where she ended is a place of thanks, a place of uh, gratitude as I look back in th on this year. Uh, we've been supported through rain, snow, sleet and hail, through uh, negative 20, 30, 40 degree weather. Uh, we really couldn't have done, we, we really couldn't have done it without the people who shared the videos, without the people who drove by and helped out and spoke, or, or the people who uh, stayed here for a period of time. Uh, thank you to everyone who has participated in this. It really does, is it's uh, community-based uh, community occupation. So as we uh, look back in that year, I wanna say thank you to everybody who has helped. But looking forward into this next year, looking forward into year two, and knowing that it is a marathon, knowing it, that uh, nothing was ever going to be solved in one year, knowing that uh, this was always going to be a process. I think as we enter this year, as we enter this next year, it's, it's, it's a few goals of mine. It's a few goals of ours. One, I think that no longer can we allow our children to be lied to. No longer can we allow ourselves to be lied to. No longer can we allow... Uh, these uh, misinformation and withholding of information to be uh, okay. No longer can we, uh, as no longer can we, as a Rockford community, just let these uh, issues just pass by without any repercussions. No longer can we take the attitude of, well, it wasn't me. No longer can we take that attitude of, well, I didn't know him. No longer can we take that attitude of, well, look what he did. Look what they were doing. No longer can we have that mindset because in, in all reality, when you lay down all the cards at the table, police terrorism is happening on a daily basis here. Use of force is used every single day here, multiple times throughout the day. So no longer can we have that conversation about, oh, well, I didn't know him. It wasn't me. Every act of police terrorism, it affects every one of us. Whether that's, whether that's a personal relationship or whether that's a community member of Rockford, a Rockford resident. It affects each and every one of us directly and indirectly. So no longer can we have those conversations uh, with ourselves. No longer can we have those conversations with our children. No longer can we uh, allow ourselves to uh, believe in these lies or be led by these lies. The goal of this occupation has been in a way to bring awareness. I bring awareness and to highlight these issues. And I feel like that is something that we have done. But in this next year, uh, I think that uh, that needs to grow. That needs to grow more to uh, not only have these conversations, not only to... The occupation has been, from the very beginning, it's been dedicated to the struggle. It's been dedicated to the truth. And what we have seen in this past year is it's been multiple pu people punished for telling the truth. It's been multiple people punished for exposing these issues and highlighting these issues. But I hope, I, I think, I don't even got to say this by now, but this is not going to stop. This is not going to stop. From day one, it was a marathon. Day 365, we still saying the same thing. It's a marathon. So as we enter this next year, I think we need to not allow ourselves or any family members or anybody we know be lied to and believe in these lies and know that police terrorism is occurring on a daily basis here. Racial injustices are happening all over this city on a daily basis. Day in and day out, people are being fed into the system of mass incarceration right here in Rockford. No longer can we as a Rockford community believe in the lies that, oh, it don't happen in Rockford, that these issues don't take place in Rockford. No longer can we ha uh, have that mindset because that is wrong, that is untrue, that is, uh, there is multiple, multiple decades worth of proof that that is, that is evidence to the contrary of that.
So as we enter this next year, we can't al allow ourselves to uh, be lied to. We need to continue these conversations, and then we need to take, uh, have honest conversations, and then take honest action. Day 365, the struggle continues.